Hello boys and girls. No prizes for guessing what this is. But you're welcome to try and guess. Should be fairly obvious. Is the motherboard out of a Acer laptop. Model number is... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Hey, it's an Acer Aspire 5542G. Uh, model number MS2277. And uh, this one... This one turns on, uh, but it doesn't do anything. Now, I've obviously you see I've already stripped it down. There's really not much uh, when it comes to stripping laptops. Um, and uh, the CPU is out at the moment. I'm just prepping it for the next step. But I thought I would run over what I've found so far. Let's have a quick look at the power supply sections and uh, that's what I focused on initially so if we start over here uh, this I believe is uh, North or South Bridge or maybe maybe both I'm not too sure um, and that's run by this power circuit here we have a couple of uh, FETs that switch through this uh, coil and provide the voltage rail for that IC there and down here we have the graphics chip which is, uh, there's a couple of voltage rails there, um, and we have a couple of FETs per rail again. And uh, over here, some more power, uh, possibly uh, to do with the charging circuit. Um, that's where the battery comes in there. Uh, I haven't really looked into detail as to what that one does. Here we have the main uh, switching coils for the CPU uh, core voltage. Uh, up here there's another one that uh, I think does the uh, RAM voltage and if we flip it over um, there's another couple down here and uh, um, this I see definitely has voltage at the moment on this oh these two do our 3 volt and 5 volt um, which are on while the unit is turned off in standby so uh, they provide um, standby power for, for what functions while it's off. Um, and then over here, um, well, e each of these, these uh, FETs are controlled by their own little switching IC, uh, such as that's quite a small little unit down there. Um, and uh, over here we have uh, a bit of a much larger IC, and that one controls the CPU core voltage. And uh, what I've found... And, 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 you, and to find the voltage, just probe either side of these uh, uh, coils and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see the voltage. Um, and when I was probing the CPU coils, uh, I had nothing. And there's a little one up here with a couple of FETs for that, um, not producing any voltage at all. Uh, these two coils are switched by this array of FETs here. Um, there are two FETs for switching to positive and one FET switching to ground uh, for each coil. Um, and I was suspecting the control IC actually. Um, I started uh, probing the various pins and, uh, and, and finding um, there, was, there was not much happening. Um, and then I sh what I should have done first is check these FETs. Uh, but I didn't, so <laughs> that was fun, and I got the data sheet for the IC, and I uh, read through that and learned how um, the, the, the stages it goes through uh, while it's starting up and, and conditions that need to be met, and uh, and, and I found uh, some of that wasn't happening, but then I uh, probed the gates with the oscilloscope and uh, the drives to these FETs, and, uh, and um, it looked like garbage. Um, it looks like a very muffled signal. Um, and then eventually today, I mean there's over the last couple of days and today, I actually measured the FETs, which as I say I should have done first because that's where the, um, the general point of failure usually is, uh, high, high current switching devices. Um, I believe these are switching about uh, um, 18 amps. I did actually find the uh, schematic for this uh, particular motherboard, which was a bit of a bonus. 
and uh, the the rail is about one volts, naught to one and a half. I think it says at about 18 amps. So these things switch uh, a lot of power. And uh, there's a discoloration on the board there, which shows that they've gotten pretty warm. Um, but on measuring them, I found that uh, that one, that one, that one, and those two have shorted. Uh, they've got a gate gate to uh, source, I think it is short. And and because of that uh, short, it's um, it's destroying the gate drive signal that's coming out of here. So while there's a bit of um, hash on the scope, it's just it's it's like a muffled signal. If you that's one way of putting it. So so that's what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pull these off and uh, turn it on and see if the drive out of that comes up nice and clean. Uh, I believe it will be in a state of of, of um, or some state of, of attempting to fire up because what happens is uh, until the voltage level um, comes good there's a power OK signal or sorry a power, a power good signal that uh, the pin goes high when it's stable and then the CPU fires back a power OK signal uh, when that's happy um, back to that chip uh, and then everything uh, um, settles the CPU can program that chip to the voltage it requires as well it can it can it can it can do a lot of um, technical stuff so um, I'll just quickly show you what the signal on the scope looks like so here we have a nice clean signal which is on the 3 volt standby line while the uh, unit is turned off um, very defined pulses there and there we have a whole lot of uh, muffled crap and that's down uh, it's down in the millivolts that's two millivolts per division there so um, we're looking at about two four four millivolts peak yeah I mean it could be just a lot of noise and it could be nothing but uh, there's, you can see clear sections where there's supposedly a, a um, attempted pulse, clear, clear divisions along there. Well, that's my theory, and I'm sticking with it. Um, I can't leave it running for too long because the heat sinks are off it, and the um, the north slash south bridge chip there gets quite hot, and uh, we don't want to kill that as well. Um, Interestingly enough, this this I see here, this uh, chip is is the handler for the um, uh, SATA, uh, USB, um, general I/O, all that sort of stuff. Um, and that's not heat sunk, but that gets really warm. So <laughs> uh, it, I, I never really liked the idea of running ICs um, uh, in their sort of, I guess maybe the maximum. Or, or, or half to, to, to three quarters of their operating uh, maximum allowable but uh, uh, I guess they do and they get away with it so now we'll um, we'll bang this onto a hot plate because uh, there's, there's gonna be a lot of thermal mass in this board and uh, it will be pretty tricky to unsolder these with just uh, hot air alone so we need to get the board nice and hot first and uh, pluck those off and see if that uh, helps the signal output from that IC. So this is the setup that I use. Um, it's a basic hot plate, cost about $20 I think. It wasn't really expensive. It has a non-stick coating which is pointless for what we do. It does nothing. Um, I highly recommend spacing the board off the deck. Uh, you don't want any of the plastic bits or anything to really touch the hot plate. All we need to do is heat the board up uh, to a, um, um, I think we usually get it up to about, last time I did a board it went up to about 200 degrees which was um, well well hot enough. Um, I think I might go for uh, 150 to 180 perhaps just to see uh, um, how that works. I don't really want to overheat everything else that's on there at this point in time uh, if I can avoid it. So. Um, it has a, a basic control on the, on the thermostat and I'll poke a thermometer up under there um, and uh, a temperature probe and just uh, keep an eye on that and we'll see how it goes. Okay now the board is cooling down. It's, uh, 
I had to get it up to 200 C seems to be an appropriate temperature for uh, preheating a board. I had the hot air gun set at 360 degrees C. Um, uh, maybe an overkill. I might have got away with 340. It uh, still took a lot of blowing, a um, lot, of, lot, of, lot of work, about probably about four minutes, three to four minutes per fet uh, to get it hot enough to melt uh, the solder. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll just need to clean those pads up with a solder iron and, uh, and I'll, I'll pop the scope on and see if we're getting some clean signals out now that the uh, shorted gate uh, pin is, is no longer shorted. And I'll uh, re-measure the fets while they're off the board. Um, certainly soldering new ones on would be uh, an interesting uh, procedure to, to be sure that the solder flows underneath them, given how much temperature it required to get that off. Um, now I do highly recommend a set of fine tweezers, especially uh, ones that will pretty much close parallel, uh, exactly parallel, because it makes grabbing onto... Uh, devices very easy. Uh, standard pliers close on an angle and uh, they tend to slip off all the time. Um, fine fine uh, tweezers are great for small components um, and uh, make life so much easier when, uh, when trying to move them around and get them into position and, and, uh, and for removing them too. Okay, now I'm about to uh, power it up and see if we have our gate pulses uh, back. As you saw before, they were rather muffled. So um, we'll crank it on and take a nosy. And look at that! somewhat fluctuating but that's to be expected because it's not able to maintain a stable voltage as yet without those FETs. So I'm happy with that. Um, all I need to do now is obtain some FETs and uh, see if this thing powers on. Um, I may pull a couple of FETs off an older uh, laptop I've got here. The specs on them is very very close. Uh, close enough that I believe it will run for at least a short period of time. It won't get uh, too hot and um, and it will be enough to see if the rest of this thing works. Um, if I get a screen up I think I can safely say uh, it will. Um, but uh, yeah I might just give that a go for curiosity's sake. Um, uh, as it stands um, I, these, these, these FETs are on eBay. Um, but they would take a, a month or so to reach me. So, um, yeah, they're, they're about 40 bucks worth of parts there, so it's, it's probably uh, well worth doing. But uh, this isn't mine, so we shall see what the owner wants to do. Okay. Um, what I've done is I have found off the other laptop a couple of FETs that uh, will pretty much do the same job. They don't have the thermal capacity uh, as, as the ratings on these ones. Um, whether or not they wouldn't just carry on running anyway for, for some time is yet to be seen, but uh, this is going to be a temporary uh, just to see if this board works. So we'll flip it over and uh, chuck the multimeter on. Right, so what we're looking for is anything around a, a volt or so, um, anything to suggest that, that this is actually working and uh, let's hit the power button three two one on and we've got fuck all <laughs> okay well that's the weirdest thing I could have sworn that these uh, outer two fits were okay although I they're a bit weird I was getting uh, one minute a shorted reading the next minute an okay reading and uh, and I don't quite know what's going on there, but they appear to be shorted at the moment, which is uh, holding the whole thing up. Even though we have our gate drive signal back, um, they are they are on their own phase, so to speak. Um, and, and the gate drive signal to those ones is a bit fuzzy as well. 
Um, so I guess the next step is just to pull those off and switch them. Yeah, back to the hot table. Okay, final thoughts on this. I replaced uh, quite a few of these with um, very close uh, equivalents. Uh, it would have been enough, I think, to see if it was going to work or not. And I still got nowhere. And on second thoughts, looking at the um, the signals on the uh, gates, I was not too happy after all with the quality of signal. We've got it's it's kind of jumping all over the place. Uh, I really don't quite know if that's because it's not able to find a stable voltage reference. But then if we look at that. That's just, um, it's very low garbage, really, compared to that, which is more defined, but still, I don't know if it's clean enough. So, if we have a look at these two FETs here, the original FETs, we can quite clearly see the one on the left versus the one on the right. The one on the right has a nice little hole underneath it and uh, while I was measuring um, gate to source uh, short circuits um, on, on all of them actually if you short all the terminals together which um, I'm thinking will just discharge the um, stray gate charge there which is holding it um, active um, then it goes away but if you short this one out it stays it's it's um, it's, it's definitely poked. And uh, final thoughts on that is that uh, the FET shorted and a, um, a pulse went back down the gate line and has damaged the control IC, hence the um, much more weaker garbled looking output on uh, two, of the, two of the channels, which is that one and that one. Um, so it's not able to properly start up. Even if these more defined signals are actually... Uh, normal, uh, these ones are fairly non-existent and will never happen. So, yeah, um, without spending a few dollars and obtaining one of those ICs, which uh, I could do out of China, I think there's some floating around, but uh, given that this thing costs next to nothing anyway, it's probably just not worth progressing any further with it. Yeah, end of story. Thanks for watching.